So let's get started. Uh, forgive me, I'm a little rusty with running the webinar and the chat and the screen at the same time. So if you see anything wonky, please um, feel free to put it in the chat um, and let me know. And so the, what we're going to talk about today, I'm actually really excited. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Uh, my name is Mindy Hannock, and I am the Community and School Garden Coordinator for UF IFAS, Sarasota County Extension. Um, I'm really privileged that I get to work with people that uh, like to spend time gardening um, and sharing tips and, and ideas with each other uh, and volunteering their time. So uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that and share with you some of the resources that we have for you um, locally and through the extension. So I encourage you to please take a moment, type in the chat, why would we want to grow gardeners? So I have two questions for you. So type in the chat, why, why would we want to grow gardeners? And what do you most want to know about gardening? Uh, so if we don't, uh, we're not going to cover everything in a half an hour, and I will stay past the half hour to answer some of your questions. Um, but if there's something in particular that you're really wanting to know, um, I want to make sure that I follow up pointing you to the right resource. Or you may have an idea of something that um, maybe is would inspire a new class or a blog um, and that type of thing. So uh, thank you, Remy. Yes, because we need to encourage pollinators. Um, wonderful. So and edible gardening can do that. Florida friendly landscaping, native uh, plantings, all those can can do that as well. Um, but you touch on something that I think is important. Um, so I am really excited to be with you. Please put in there, why would we wanna grow gardeners? And what do you most wanna know about gardening? And then um, as you do that, I'm going to, um, some folks when we say extension, aren't really sure what that means. Um, so I did wanna just touch on that means it's a partnership between Sarasota County, the University of Florida and the USDA uh, where there's, we're basically sharing research-based information and education out to the community on the topics that you all find relevant. Um, so we have quite a few uh, that we cover in our area um, between agricultural, agriculture, natural resources, uh, nutrition, sustainability, uh, horticulture, youth programming, all sorts of really cool things that, um, that we talk about and share with you. And these are just some of the logos where you may see some of um, some of our programs uh, listed. And we do strive to be inclusive for everyone. So if you ever need accommodation to be able to attend or participate in our events, please reach out to us and let us know how we can assist you. And so I'm going to take just a quick moment and look at some of the questions or statements in the chat about why would we want to grow gardeners and what do you most want to know? Um, so folks are talking about passive solar energy capture, how to grow things in Florida, um, how to turn their lawn into something that's pollinator, pollinator native plants. Growing a vegetable garden in Florida is difficult. It can be difficult. There's definitely a learning curve, um, but it can be done. Um, and so we want to share some ideas to help make that easier for you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about gardening in general and some of the local resources that would kind of apply to everybody. And then we're going to hone in a little bit specifically about edible. Um, and then I... Sometimes I'm going to toggle into some websites, so I might need feedback from you to make sure that you're seeing the right screen. So thank you. Let's see here. So why would we want to grow gardeners? Well, it aligns a lot with some of the initiatives that we have within the county as far as um, quality of life, world-class amenities, that type of thing. Um, and gardeners report decreased depression, anxiety, BMI, stress, mood disturbance, um, and the an increase in a sense of community, physical activity, cognitive function, and quality of life. Um, you don't have to be a community gardener to, to glean all of those benefits. Um, and gardening is actually a moderate form of exercise if you're doing that about two hours a week. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful thing to, to do for yourself. And then with edible gardening, you get the added benefit of being able to um, eat something uh, that you made. So 99% uh, of our community gardeners uh, responded to a survey citing benefits in physical activity, healthy eating, economic benefit, or a sense of well-being resulting from participation in the community garden. And I want to say it was over 80% that cited uh, benefit in each of those categories. 
Um, so lots of um, wonderful benefits to gardening. Um, so I'm really delighted that you're here with us today because um, these benefits um, can, can be yours um, with a little sweat equity. So let's see. So we're talking about growing gardeners and the tools and resources that we can share with you to do that um, for all ages and stages of your life. So some of these resources may be um, learning about, some of y'all had mentioned about pollinators and insects and right plant, right place, or the right season um, soil, because we a lot of us have rather sandy uh, material or fill, um, and it may not have the nutrients that our plants are needing for growing. Um, weeds, mulch, composting, fertilizer, um, and conserving water. We have all sorts of um, information that we can share with you. So some of the main things, we're going to talk a little bit about right plant, right place, and right season, uh, especially when it comes to vegetables and herbs. That can be really important. And the main thing I want you to be able to walk away with is understanding how to navigate some of the resources that we have for you um, online uh, and how to sign up for classes and all sorts of things like that. Um, and then exploring some of the local connections and ideas on how to get involved. So Florida friendly resources, that's touched on a little bit earlier when people are talking about um, benefits for pollinators and wild plant to put where and, um, and things like that. Then there's also edible gardening resources, IPM, how to request a speaker. Maybe you're part of a group and you'd like to have a class um, on a topic that we offer. Uh, maybe you want to learn how to test your soil. That can be really important for a lot of folks. Um, and so we're going to talk about all these types of things. And many of these are actually available through our extension website, but sometimes folks have um, challenges navigating it because there's so much information there. And so I want to make sure that I'm pulling this up and that you are seeing um, these screens. So let me get that there. So hopefully you're seeing our website. So to find our website, if you put in your search engine, Sarasota, and IFAS, I'm going to put that, that should pull up our website. So that's um, Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences is what that IFAS stands for, um, because we're that connection between University of Florida and Sarasota. And so lots of cool information on our website. So you can pick your core areas and it'll take you into some of those components. But And if you're not sure where to find something on our website, um, and you've, this general email is a wonderful one. Um, some of our communication staff answer that and they're really great at pointing you in the right direction or forwarding your request to the proper person. So that's a good thing to know. But where I spend a lot of time um, is right down here. So bear with me one moment. I have a few things on my screen. So down here, um, there is a bar that says find your opportunity. So if you click on view all extension classes events, it takes you to our event right page and it will list all of the classes for you. And you can do it by date or by collection. Um, I tend to stick by date. I'll pop in and out of the collections, but um, sometimes there might be a, a topic of interest that um, wasn't put in multiple places. So if I don't tab through all of them, um, you know, so I just tend to stick by the by the date. So if you were to click on this, it takes you right over to our Eventbrite. This is important because every great once in a while, there may be someone out there that tries to list our classes or events and charge you money for them. And so it's beneficial if you're registering directly through our Eventbrite. Then if you wanted to request a speaker. So sometimes one of our, our colleagues might teach about pollen planting for pollinators, right? And he might go out to garden clubs or HOAs, um, different groups to offer that topic to them. So they would be able to see that um, by clicking in this tab about finding the, the topics and uh, um, that we offer. So under request a speaker. And then if you're looking for training by topics, that might take you to our master naturalist, master gardener, if you subscribe to our newsletter, um, the upcoming events class blast, it basically will send you an email, I think, once or twice a month, just with the upcoming events. So if you forget how to get to our event right page, you'll get a reminder in your email, maybe once or twice a month um, to kind of um, spur your interest. 
this is one of the things I think is really helpful, this get pest plant help. So say you're out there gardening, you notice a bug, you notice a plant, you don't know what kind it is or what you should do for it. You can find the master gardeners um, by clicking on that. And it shows you um, where our main location is, what the hours are, um, the phone number in case you're wanting to call ahead of time just to make sure if the, that there's a volunteer at the desk. This is the email. You can send the email and then they respond to that email. Uh, pictures are really helpful. And then also, if you like to do in-person at a local library, it lists some of the venues where you can find a volunteer um, to answer some of your questions. So that one is um, a very popular uh, place to resource our master gardeners. Um, if you're mostly always, always going to be through email, it's plantclinic at scgov.net. And I would say the more specific the question, um, the better. And if you're having issue with a plant, if it's completely dead, it's kind of hard to give you feedback. Um, find some, um, some symptoms that you can take images of uh, before it's completely um, too far gone to notice what may have happened. This also has on here, if you want to get your soil tested, it lets you know how to do that. At our local office, we can do pH and we can do salt. Um, if you want nutrient analysis, you would send it away to Gainesville and there's instruction on that. Um, you can do it right here, get soil water tested. So you can do pH and salt. If you want nutrient analysis, you would send that away to Gainesville. Um, and then, um, and there's a new thing called a soil kit where it gives you, um, it's more expensive, but it gives you really detailed, but user-friendly information. We can't do analysis of toxins that would go to private lab. Um, there's also, if you want to get your irrigation checked, because maybe some of the plants in your landscape are struggling because there's something faulty with your system and something's getting too much water, not enough water. And there's also one of my colleagues teaches a class called DIY drip. So if you're totally new to drip irrigation and you want to set up your own system, um, that would be offered and listed as a class under our event, right? And then say you, you wanted to be a volunteer, we do have master gardeners. Um, the most important thing to understand about that program, if you have interest in it, it's not so much just to teach you about gardening in Florida, it's very much to train people that want to volunteer in the community. So if you're really strapped for time, it's probably not the best uh, way to go about it. We have a lot of classes free on our event, right? Um, so the master gardener training that's done in a cohort, cohort um, over a series of months, and that's um, and they recruit a new class every year. And so this would give you more information about that program, what the time commitment is, and how to reach out to get more information. So, um, so hopefully you're seeing the right screen on that as well. So just wanted to make sure that you're seeing all these. Um, that that ribbon along along the bottom is really helpful. Um, and then also. If you wanted to connect to, we have a lot of really informative videos that have been already recorded. Um, and we also share about like upcoming events, like when the Master Gardeners have their plant sale and we have our EdFest and we put that out to social media um, or we have short videos. So this is how you'd connect to our social media. Um, and I wanna make sure you're still seeing the right screen, yep. So this is how you'd connect to the social media, but this is how, if you pull up on our YouTube, And what this does by category to some extent, um, one of my colleagues has really cool information about all different uh, kinds of wildlife that lives here. Um, but we have uh, we have recordings that are in under agriculture and also gardening and landscaping. And we have, um, you know, so quite a few different topics for you to explore there. If you clicked into gardening and landscaping, you're going to see, I'll show you just a a little bit of a listing and it's going to auto play. So bear with me one second. So along this, sorry, this will probably pop up an ad. On the right side, you're going to see a series of um, creative collards. Like this is all about growing like the brassica family in Florida, which grows really well. If you are, sorry. So if you are newer to gardening in Florida, brassicas grow really well. And so this is a video that talks about growing brassicas, what are the pests of brassicas, um, what are the nutritional needs, that type of thing. Um, and then we have, if you're newer to um, 
say you wanted to garden organically, we have like a recording that's School Gardens, Organic Veggie Gardens 101, um, and it kind of walks you through that whole um, process of starting up uh, your organic vegetable bed. So this, and then we have edible gardening series. We have a two hour long webinar about tomatoes. And then we also have about nematodes. Sometimes people struggle with growing uh, plants here because of nematodes in the soil. And it talks about how to address that. And then also how to like, how to identify what's wrong with your plant. So, um, because we have master gardeners available, but maybe you're something that you're really wanting to dive into yourself. So I just wanted to make sure that um, you knew where those videos lived and where to find all these resources. So uh, now I'm gonna go right back into our PowerPoint presentation. So that was some of the resources there. Um, if you are interested in something, you didn't see any of it pop up in there, let me know. But I, for the, the, one of the things I really wanna encourage you to do is get your hands dirty. Go out and observe your space, observe the sunlight, the drainage, um, that type of thing. Um, take notes, scout for bugs. The more you engage with your space and notice things, um, you'll kind of get an idea of what's normal in your yard, what's not, um, and what you think is growing successfully that you'd like to replicate, and things that are really struggling. And it, the more you'll understand like your landscape, then, then it's easier for you to kind of reach out and ask questions of, I have a really shady spot. It's shady all year. And what can I put there? Um, that type of thing. So I would encourage you to explore other spaces. Um, and that's to help you decide what kind of plants in Florida appeal to you, um, especially like with couples and families, the your design aesthetic, if you will, or what you find appealing can vary quite a bit. And if you go and explore different spaces, you can kind of have an uh, like a low stress way to kind of enjoy looking at things and sharing what you find appealing. Um, and so that that's a great way to do it. You can learn some, there's some that have signage, Shamrock Park and Twin Lakes Park are extension grounds. Um, the Master Gardeners have done a great job of adding more and more signage to help you identify what plants you may be seeing. Um, you can also explore um, online the Florida Friendly Gardening Guides to see what type of plants appeal to you. Go out to botanical gardens. Um, I think there's an arboretum in West Blaylock Park. Um, there's a succulent garden out there. Um, some garden clubs have walkable grounds. Um, just know that sometimes you may be out and you may see something of interest and it may be invasive. Um, and you can reference and find out, um, take a picture of what that plant because maybe if it doesn't have a sign and you don't know what it is, you're welcome to reach out to the plant clinic and ask them about that type of plant. Um, and then there's some websites that can help you identify what may be invasive too. So also walk your neighborhood, um, notice the yards around you and see what you think is looking successful that you might have interest in having in your yard. Talk to your neighbors. How long has that plant been there? Been there? Is it kind of oriented um, in a similar way uh, for lighting and things like that? Um, where you would be able to place it in your yard. And you might get them, they might be willing to give you cuttings and all sorts of stuff. So um, one of the primary ways I reach out in relation to edible gardening through the to the community is we have one seed classes that we offer through the libraries. Um, and I can do that online as well, or um, as a speaker to a garden club or an HOA, that type of thing. Um, but we share we share out to the community um, seed packets of a singular crop that changes every year. Um, and then in the class, we talk about how do we like to grow our vegetables, some of the resources I'm sharing with you today. Um, and then also how do we like to eat our vegetables? And it's a nice way for people to connect with each other and share their experience. So that way um, people are learning um, what other people have had success with um, in addition to, to what I share. So uh, free seed packets should be out at your local libraries. You may need to ask where they have them located or you can pop into our extension office. Um, and um, it's Swiss chard right now. And uh, so we do have a seed library in the extension lobby. It's pretty empty right now. I think there's just one seed packets up at the top and maybe might have some bush beans and maybe some watermelon radish in there. Um, it's usually whatever leftover from school garden distributions or if there's pullback of seeds from a company or a community member harvested and did some seed saving in their yard, um, 
or uh, they had extra seeds that they weren't going to be able to use in a timely fashion. So it doesn't have to be edible to go into the seed library, but it can't be invasive. Um, so if you bring in seeds and you want us to separate them into smaller, smaller packets or anything like that, we're happy to do that. So um, we're eight to five Monday through Friday, uh, kind of banker hours when it comes to holidays, that type of thing. And it's right inside all, all, on the wall <clears throat> on the right side when you come into the extension office. Um, so this is one of the things that popped up, of course, was the seasonality. And we are so different than a lot of it. Than if people are coming from the north, it's a, basically like a flip. Um, so February, if you were in like a zone six, seven, this is not what February planting would look like for you. February is an awesome month for gardening your vegetables. Um, the For purposes of the chart that you see on your screen, um, we're actually considered south on this map because we're south of um, State Road 70. Uh, and then I'll add a little caveat to that. This doesn't mean that you'll never experience a frost. Um, it just is going based on some of those average temperatures. Uh, so for the purposes of this chart, yes, we're considered um, on the south part. Uh, and then on the left, there's QR codes for you and websites, and I can send these in a follow-up email. One is a gardening calendar, and it kind of gives you tips of what you might be doing every month for your gardening calendar. Um, so I have a, I enjoy watching um, some of the gardening shows on the BBC uh, just for fun. Um, their planting calendars and their soil are totally different. Um, I enjoy uh, watching and I get some tips, but when it comes to what I need to do for my yard, I still need to refer back to um, some of these resources. The infographic you're looking at, it has, um, there's one for every month. So you can, it shows you what's easy to transplant right now. And then it also suggests to you what to use for seed. Now you'll notice it says you can do bush beans and okra and that type of thing right now and melons. Um, I per personally, because my timing for some of my cold crops is gonna be more limited and I can put some of those other crops out in like March or April or whatever, I'll probably still be leaning into um, like peas um, and lettuces and things like that because I'm gonna run out of time as to when I can get those in the ground. Uh, whereas I'll have a little bit more time for some of the other crops. And before we go, make sure that I share to you a website where you're going to put in, you only need to put in your zip code and it will pull up uh, planting information for you and other resources. And actually, let's do that right now. Um, bear with me. I'm going to pull a website up. Well, this one just kind of shows you the calendar and what you can click into um, for tips on like what you would be planting and doing in February. Talks about bulbs, ground cover, vegetables, lawns, roses, shrubs, palms, all of that and gives you additional information. But I want to take a moment and I'm going to pull up. If you put in your search engine IFIS and plant now, All you have to do is put in your zip code and it's going to pop up some information. So before we do that, I want to point out this gardening info tab. Say this um, right here, the Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide, it's 12 pages, has really useful charts in it. And then it also talks about um, it, like a little bit about, um, you know, some of the common pests and things like that. But there's also an organic vegetable gardening in Florida. And it, this one goes into really deep, good detail about ways to improve your organic matter. So, um, which for Florida is really important when it comes to vegetable gardening because we are so sandy. Unless you're out there constantly watering and fertilizing, a lot of things are just gonna kind of keep going right through. Um, and that's not cost effective for you and it's not environmentally friendly to do it that way either. So um, you do want to improve the organic matter of the of the growing media of, of what you're growing in. So um, you can grow in ground if you're amending properly um, or if you're gardening and raised beds at some point, you're still going to need to replenish your growing medium. And this kind of details for you how to do that. 
And it does point out um, like food safety when it comes to things like manure and stuff like that. So this is a really useful read. That was found through this, um, let me see, make sure you're seeing that, yes. So I'm gonna go right back to this gardening info where if you put in, so our web, our uh, office, type it code, and this is, it says January is the month. We're almost to February, so let's go with February. And it says plant now. And it's going to show you all the different crops that you can plant in February. Okay? And then you can dive as deep into it as you want to by hitting more info. It'll let you know um, how, like, your spacing um, what the expected yield can be, if there's certain varieties that they think is preferable for Florida. Um, it's not all inclusive, but it does let you know which ones that they've done research um, on. And then you can even click into even more information from there. So you can keep it really, really um, fast and easy, or you can take a deeper dive. And then if you are, one of the questions I hear is, why can't I find Florida produce at the farmer's market? And they're asking me in like July. Um, and sometimes that's off season. So one of the things you can also do while you're waiting to get your crops um, to an edible stage, you can click the fresh now and it lets you know what type of crops you might be able to find in the market um, when it comes to fresh produce. And it kind of just, the one of the nice out to some crops that you may not have heard about yet, but grow in Florida and it, it gives you more information. All right, so this is a website I think is very um, handy and useful. And so I'm gonna top, I'm gonna put this right here into the chat in one second. And um, most people I know once they've used it, they're like, where is this been on my life? Um, I didn't make it, I'm just sharing it. So let me go back to our PowerPoint. Um, and then if you are really tight for time, um, I can try and share out um, some of this information for you if you have to log off at the half hour mark. So we also have um, our local office. We did an edible gardening series. It has about 25 different episodes that range in time from like 10 minutes to about 20 minutes. Um, we did it a lot during some of the lockdown window. It was our way of kind of engaging with the community um, when people were really interested in learning about edible gardening. Um, and it kind of served to create a catalog. So uh, we didn't save all the Q&A in the recordings, but what we did do is take some of those and create a question of the week. So if you go to the edible gardening uh, page, then you can, you can watch the YouTube video. You can see the blog if there was any kind of questions or resource links that came out of the topic and the conversation uh, from those uh, sessions. And then now uh, one of the things we offer um, intermittently we just did one in person the other day for the ABCs of, uh, of edible gardening. Um, so we offer that sometimes. And when we do, it's part webinar, part in person. And that would be listed through our Eventbrite page. So um, that was fun. We did some bug scouting and ID in the garden. Um, gardeners got to explore and see what crops were growing. Um, so it was pretty interactive. And then... So when it comes to Florida friendly edible landscaping, so when you're growing your food, you can you can do that in a Florida friendly way, just as you would with a lot of your landscape plants. Um, and so that's right plant, right place. Um, try and use drip irrigation, hand water, you know, try to be efficient with that type of thing. Um, you don't wanna starve your plants by any means. Um, at least when you're watering, it's gonna be something that you're gonna be consuming that, that moisture later on. Your fruit is gonna be um, full of hydration. But, uh, but you still want to be conscientious about it. So you can do that, um, con you know, that conscientious fertilizing and drip irrigation. Uh, fertilizer, you're going to always follow the label on the bag. Uh, most of your fertilizers for your vegetable garden aren't going to exceed what would, um, what would be unpermissible from a, a fertilizer blackout period. And most of the times when you're gardening your, your vegetables in Florida, you're, um, you're usually applying it outside of that, um, that close um, that blackout window. Bear with me one second. Something's trying to pop up at me, which is not what I wanted. Okay. 
So hopefully you're still seeing this screen. Um, mulching is really important when it comes to your vegetable garden for a few different reasons. It, it stops the, the, it prevents some of the splashback of your soil onto your plants because a lot of our pathogens um, can be soil borne. So it actually helps keep your vegetable plants a little healthier. Um, the other is it helps with when you're watering, it reduces that evaporation because if you're watering in the middle of the day, you're probably losing over two thirds of that water that you're trying to apply to evaporation. Uh, so you want to water early morning um, or, um, or towards the evening, but preferably early morning. Um, and that mulch can help with regulating the soil temperature um, and lots of different things. So, um, so definitely mulch your vegetable garden. Um, and there's documents that I can share with you on what type of mulch you would want to consider and how you would apply it. Um, but don't bury your poor little seeds. Um, you're going you're gonna to leave that uh, until they sprout, and then you can apply more mulch over time as your plant grows. So some of my top tips when it comes to um, uh, like when you're learning curve of gardening in Florida, we talked a little bit about some of that season piece. A lot of it is um, please don't buy a beefsteak tomato plant March through July. Um, it's just not a good buy uh, because by the time you get that plant into production, the our temperatures in the evening and our humidity are going to be high enough that your pollination is going to be minimal. So a beef steak tomato plant, if, if you're trying to follow a northern planting habit, your disease pressure um, and what you're going to have to do to try to nurse that plant along, along with that reduced poll pollination is just torturing yourself. So that time of year, yeah, some of your cherry tomatoes, that type of thing, your beef steak tomato plants, actually, you'd put out in like maybe late summer, uh, early fall, and get them into production. Um, and then if you're uh, if you're used to a northern habit of just going out and planting seeds in your yard and expecting them to grow, that's not as common here. Um, some crops might do it, but most of them won't, just because our soil tends to be pretty minimal when it comes to organic matter and nutrients um, and water retention. So you can definitely garden in ground when you see our community gardens. A lot of times it'll look like they're gardening in ground, but they've been amending that soil over time um, to, to get it to that stage. Allow for the shift in the sun. Um, we have less daylight hours in the winter months. Our sun tends to be from the south. So if you're gonna be edible gardening, try to avoid having something super tall on the south side of your vegetable garden because it'll get shaded out. Um, and then before you volunteer for a beautification committee or a landscape review committee, please learn about Florida gardening because um, there's a learning curve and also like an aesthetic expectation. Um, we don't have things covered in snow, but a lot of our plants here have some seasonality as far as their their beauty, um, the you know the greenness of the leaves, that type of thing. Um, so um, don't plant your house plants outside. Um, some of them can be invasive, so check before you do that. Um, and then avoid weed and feed uh, fertilizers. So um, some additional resources I wanted to point you to. There is a free PDF um, on our website that is called Grow to Learn. It's geared towards gardening with kids, but if you're newer to vegetable gardening in Florida, it's really helpful. It identifies some common weeds. It, it identifies um, different ways to grow. Like it talks a little bit about hydroponic. It talks about vertical gardening, various different things. Um, so it's a really fun resource. It talks about how to make self-watering containers. Um, and then if you're going to be looking for information from uh, like your local library um, or bookstore, ask if they have a Florida gardening section because sometimes it's categorized. So if you're in a section and you just see everything gardening has, and nothing says the word Florida on it, ask if they have them in a different spot. Um, so, um, and some of our local libraries have some really good resources. I found some of these at our local libraries. And then also sometimes they have books by Tom McCubbin, M-A-C-C-U-B-B-I-N. And he's a retired extension agent. Um, and he has like a month by month Florida gardening, Florida gardener's handbook type of thing as well. So um, these are some good resources. There's also a Florida's Best Fruiting Plants by um, uh, Charles Boning, I believe it is. Um, and if you're trying to see the stature of a plant and when it fruits and he describes the taste, that's really helpful. So uh, you saw our website and I have one or two places in there I'd like to touch on. We have a story map tool that shows you where our demo gardens are, points out where the community gardens are. 
Just know that our community gardens, because they are allotment style where people are growing food for their own table um, and they're putting some of their, you know, their own uh, effort into it because they maintain that space. It's not parks or, or, or me that goes out and does it. It's the gardeners that do it. Those are locked. We, we open those up if we're having like a workshop or an event. Um, but you can see quite a bit from the outside fence um, that, you know, there's things that are definitely growing in Florida. Um, but if you want to know like how to grow uh, spinach or something like that, and you were to type that keyword and IFAS in your search engine, it should pop up information from UF about that. The other is if you were to put blog or video, that can kind of point you to um, additional um, information on it. So some more resources, and I know I'm over time, so I want to thank you for joining me. I'm going to keep going. I will share um, some follow-up information with you through an email, and then I'm also going to um, answer any questions you have, too. So, um, so I'll keep going, and I will say thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will uh, understand if you only allotted a half hour for this and if you have to go. Uh, the Growables website um, is not run by us. Um, it had a, it used to have a fruit club where they would meet in person and everything. I don't think they do that anymore. But the reason I point out this one is they have um, quite a bit of an index of various different crops that uh, people have, you know, written about, whether it's vegetables, fruit trees, that type of thing. And they list their references. So sometimes they're referring to information from UF, or if it's a crop that um, that might be newer to here where we don't have as much research on it, maybe you know it might be like mangoes and things like that. We have lots of information, but they might also put in information from like Hawaii and various different places, but they cite their resources. So, um, so that's fun also because some of our extension agents made really cool videos about like how to grow bananas and papayas. And some of those links um, weren't functioning through when the Flash uh, player went. So, uh, but some of them play uh, when resourced through the Growables website. Garden clubs. So when it comes to local resources, I can't recommend any one garden club or anything like that, but I can let you know there are garden clubs out there. Some of them have niches. Um, so like niches, so uh, maybe it's a succulent garden club or a rose garden club or just a general garden club, but it's by you know your specific geography. Um, so there's like Sarasota Garden Club, there's a Founders Garden Club, there's Alamanda down in Northport. Um, Manatee Rare Fruit is one where they specialize in edible um, and they'll source speakers and various different things. I think they even have a plant sale coming up um, in March. Um, so you can see here one of the extension agents out of Manatee is going to be talking about mushrooms in February. So uh, do a little bit of an online exploration to find a local garden club that's appealing to you. Some of them will have potlucks, um, speakers, they might do plant swaps, um, you might get to taste fruit of something before you invest in buying the plant for your yard. Uh, just know that sometimes the plant swaps and the plant sales uh, for a lot of places you can still um, end up with an invasive plant so still try to do some of your research. Uh, there is uh, a really cool um, catalog of YouTube videos on growing tropical fruits. Uh, that's from an extension agent out of Miami-Dade. And so it talks about pruning, fertilizer, and different crops. It's really, um, it's, it's, it's worth a watch. You do want to allow for the fact that the, the soil down there and the temperature is going to be different than what we have. So you're still going to temper some of that information, but a lot of it would still apply um, for, our, uh, for growing some of these in our area. Uh, if you super get into, you know, growing and with production and you like to know what crops might be coming out soon or what type of, um, um, you know, different research is being done, that type of thing, there's a specialty crop um, magazine uh, that has um, lots of different information in there and also shares about like events and things going on in the industry. Uh, there's a green living toolkit, um, so it has little different components about energy, food, waste, water, nature, um, events that are going on on those topics. Um, there's also like Transition Sarasota. Um, there's some groups where they're nonprofit where they're working on trying to plant fruit trees out in the community. Um, so, uh, you know, just uh, if you need help pointed in any direction, some of these things I can't necessarily, I, I don't want it to seem like it's a recommendation, um, but uh, definitely do some um, exploration online. And then um, specifically about our garden programs, we have seven community gardens. 
There's an orchard um, out, it's a very small one, probably about 10 trees out at Colonial Oaks that's open. Um, there's a couple of big mangoes in there, um, a couple of citrus eking along and a pomegranate, uh, fig, peach, that type of thing. Um, there's a lot of school gardens in the community. So if you enjoy growing vegetables um, and you like working with kids, volunteering at a school garden is something that um, most of the time the school welcomes volunteers because uh, uh, they can get more done if they have a little more adult hands uh, helping them out. Uh, so let me know if that's of interest. Um, and then also, this is the location of the community gardens. We have um, some in Sarasota, then we have also out towards Inglewood, Northport, um, and three of the gardens have been in operation over 20 years, uh, which is pretty amazing. So, um, and then, like I said, we have school gardens. Um, these are just some of the quotes from folks about community gardens and school gardens and why they've, um, why they participate in them. So thank you everyone. Um, thanks so much.